Last episode, we got a taste of living the good life in New York, across the river in Brooklyn with Mitch Belisle. This time, it's Midtown Manhattan and the very interesting life of Tyler Fiorito. I'll say, you know what they say about goalies? It's all true. <laughs> but no, really, Tyler's a great guy, working hard in the finance industry all week, finding the net for the cannons on the weekends, survived running with the Bulls, and pledged his brain to further concussion research. And you know there's something up there, he's an Ivy League grad. Let's go take a look at this week's Boston Cannons player profile. X here, X, X. Hey, Mullins, X, X, top side, top side. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. A little more than Mullins. Now that I'm on the Cannons, I kind of look back and, you know, last year when uh, the Bayhawks played against the Cannons, I was, I was on the other side of the field and, and, and being shot on by the same guys I'm playing with now. And it was kind of funny. Was, that was one of the best games I've ever played in my career. Uh, we lost 9-8, to eight, I believe, in overtime. Uh, I made 31 saves. So I think at that moment, I think the Boston guys realized that they want me on their team. And when they had the opportunity to trade for me this year, uh, they told me that I was their guy. And I'm excited to be part of this team this year. playing at a young age, uh, found out that I was, I was pretty good at it. I, I enjoyed the thrill of you know making that big save, uh, changing the momentum in a game, and then really just driving your teammates forward. Uh, I think as a goalie, you uh, have the ability to, to, to really just swing the momentum, and that's exciting. Uh, every time I go in there, I know um, you play confidently, you, you think no one can score on you, and um, that's kind of what I've done well over the last couple of years. Back right here, back right. Thanks here, back left, back left. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Nice shot, Brody. Hey, nice trail. I think there's a stereotype that we're all crazy, uh, that we all like getting hit with the ball, that uh, we enjoy inflicting pain upon ourselves. Uh, I'm telling you, I think I'm one of the most normal. Um, I don't enjoy getting hit. I think that, um, you know, I, I think the guys out there that are, that are, that are crazier, you know, guys like Will Manny, they get hacked by guys like Mike Evans from the Bayhawks and swinging their sticks and metal shafts right to, the, right to their bare wrist. I mean, that's crazy to me. I'd rather get hit by a 100 mile an hour ball, rubber ball, than, than that metal stick any day of the week. So. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Nice shot, Brody. Hey, nice trail. Yeah, I mean, I, I live two blocks away from work, so it's it's pretty convenient. But I, I take this right through Times Square every morning and, and at night. It's pre pretty hectic. Yeah, it's crazy. There's so much to do here all the time. I think that's the benefit. You work hard, uh, like I said, Monday through Friday, 6 to 6. But, you know, on those weekends when we don't have lacrosse, it's, it's an exciting place to live, especially at 26 years old. There's, there's always something going on. Um, I get made fun of a lot at, 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 by some of my friends because I, I, I have a collage in my room. It's, it's tickets of every event I've been to. I mean, I've been to Broadway shows, I've been to concerts, um, uh, you, you know, you've been to NBA playoff games, hockey games. So there's always something to do. Uh, you just have to be open to, to finding it. I think it's, it's just another place. It's, it's just as small as you want to make it. And, I know exactly where I want to go, so it's, uh, it's definitely a great place to live and I've enjoyed it for the last four years. You know, pretty, pretty exciting, but also uh, pretty tiring when you just want to get home. My favorite lacrosse moment, I think it's, uh, you know, I had a great experience at Princeton. Some of my best friends are, are guys on the team. Uh, it's kind of funny now, Chad Weedmeyer, who is a defense on our team this year, was my roommate in college. Uh, I was kind of excited after being traded that I'd be reunited with Chad. Uh, you ask guys like Rob Pinnell, I mean, they, they grew sick of playing against Chad and I over, over four years because we just played well together. So when I got traded here, I was really excited about that opportunity again. Yeah, it, it's definitely hard to stay in shape when you're working so much. By the end of the day, you're pretty tired. Motivating yourself to work out is, is always difficult. I think the crazy thing about New York, and the, or the great thing about New York is 
the group fitness studios have popped up everywhere. Uh, you know, those are the ones I can do. You know, there's a spin class three blocks away uh, that I go to twice a week. There's a boxing class where there's 40 bags and, a, and an instructor tells you what to do. So I think those are great. The other thing that we do is we have a nice group of, you know, four or five guys on the cannons in New York that kind of push each other to, to work out and, and to improve because unlike other sports where you practice, you know, five, six days a week and play a game, we practice for an hour and a half on Friday nights and then a quick walkthrough on Saturday. So most of it's your personal responsibility. Uh, tonight I'm actually going to go work out with Shadow on the water. You get the breeze, you get the sunset. So those are kind of things you, you have these to help motivate you. And, uh, you know, it's not always easy when you work 12 hours and all you want to do is go to sleep. But you know, the self-motivation and knowing that your teammates are working just as hard as you are, you need, you need to put in that effort so you can perform on game day. He's a lot more athletic than I am and usually runs our workouts, so I just try and do whatever he tells me to get in the best shape I can be. You do this because you love it. I mean, I still play lacrosse because lacrosse has given me so much in my life. Watching the kids come up to you and to sign autographs at the end of the games, is that's what makes it worth it. The, the guys you play with every day, it's, Trust me, we don't do it for the money, so it's, uh, it's definitely a great experience and a good thing to be a part of.